Hello, my name is Pandora and welcome to this quick video on using SCAL 3 and I'm using version 3.027 um, so I don't know if these features exist in the earlier version because I really have only started playing around with this recently. Um, I got an email asking me about the shadow effect particularly with regard to matting and layering for um, someone who's a card maker uh, but also does scrapbooking so this is a quick video to answer that. If you do have any requests, you can email me at myrequest at btinternet.com and if I know or I can find out, I'll be very happy to answer the question. Let's just change page here. Um, I have a black cat cutter, which is fantastic, um, although I'm now thirsting after the new Silver Bullet or Silver Phoenix machine, which looks fabulous. Still, back to matting and layering. In SCAL 3, when you type text, it automatically assumes you want to cut it out. So if I click on the preview button up here, you can see it's quite ready there to cut out. Now, if you did want to do print and cut for any reason, you would need to go through the print and cut functions, um, which I've explained in a different video. And also, if you do want to cut, I'd recommend you move most things down to this part of your virtual mat because SCAL 3 starts cutting from here, so it saves the mat, it saves the cutter traveling long distances. I just keep it in the middle of the screen to make it easier for you all to see. So if I want to cut a shadow for this, one of the ways you could do it is you could cut this out, then you could come back, select it, come over to this side, and you have a whole variety of shadow options here, including rounded straight, blackout, shadow blackout, and the shadow blackout with rounded edges, and the shadow blackout with straight edges, but let's just pick a normal shadow. And I think you can see quite easily if I select from one to the other, it goes from normal to shadow. And if we click on the cut button, you can see it will cut that much bigger. There are some issues here, by the way, about where it will cut, because if you look at this area in particular, you can see that this, in fact, would cut into each other. So you'd probably want to make sure that you put weld on when you were doing that. So if I just come over here and select this and click on weld, make sure it's switched on. Um, and then we come back to preview. You can see now it will sort those issues out here on the C and across the L and the A, which was a bit of an issue before. So just something to be aware of if you want to do it that way. If I turn it back to uh, normal, one of the things I like to do is cut out two or three things at one time, and often I'll have different types of paper on the same mat, so I don't have to keep taking it out of the machine. So one way to do this is you could simply move it up out of the way a bit, use, make sure it's selected, and then use Control C and then Control V. So that's Control Copy and Control V for paste. Move it down and making sure the bottom one, what well, doesn't really matter which one, but so let's say the bottom one's selected, you can say, give me a shadow. And now if we go back to cutter preview, you can see that we've got two here, one up here and one down here, and they'll both cut out. So that's all fine and good, and it works. However, there's another way of doing it, which is slightly different and um, I think slightly easier, almost. Um, if you go to Object, the Object menu, under here you've got Shadow Layer. And here, this dialog, when you click on it, this dialog box will appear. The default is 1. I have no idea what 1 means. Point 0.1 bigger, it doesn't really affect me. I can see what it's doing. And you can increase the size of the shadow just by clicking on this or even entering a number. So if you want to, you can take it all the way up to 6. I think it goes all the way up to about 10. But you might as well just have a big square then. So in fact, you can either click and drag or you could highlight this and just enter 1 and it'll go back to one. So if we click on OK, and I drag the layer palette up, so just so it's in the picture here easily, you can see we've now got two layers. We've got the text layer, and we've got the shadow layer. Now that 
shadow layer isn't doing a great deal for me, so let's change the color. But I like to keep track of what I'm doing, so by double clicking on this layer icon, I can bring it up and I'm going to call this red. And by coming across here under the appearance, I tend to switch off the stroke because I come from a background of using Inkscape with Sign Cut. And if you have both fill and stroke on with them, then it tends to give Sign Cut a headache. So I tend to switch the stroke off. You can leave it on if you want to. If I want to change the color of the layer, I can select it. Now, the easy way, if you click away from it, sometimes it's quite hard to get back onto the right layer. Um, so one of the ways to do it is simply to click on the layer icon here and or if you want to make it even easier to see what it looks like you can use the eye switch here which is an on off switch simply click it will switch off the text layer or switch it back on again and then select it that way it's up to you to change the color i'm going to click on this box beside the word color it brings up this color dialog palette and let's say we change it to red and say OK. And then I'm going to switch the text back on and you can now see we've got the black cat outlined in red. If you wanted to do more than one layer, you can again, I'm going to switch the text, which is the top layer off. Make sure I'm selected the second layer and there you can see that because all of the handles have appeared. And you can do the same thing again object, shadow layer, bring up the dialog box, and again, it's one if we increase it to say two just for fun. One of the things that seems to me a little bit buggy, let's just take that back to one, is if I say do a blackout shadow, it works on the smaller spaces, so for instance within the A's, but it really doesn't do it in the bigger ones. So don't quite know why that is um, something that doesn't quite work as well as perhaps it might. If you increase the size and say, OK, and let's switch the red layer off so we can see it. Now you can see it has done it. But again, if you go to print preview, you can see it will give you a blackout and it will just leave these little parts to cut out. So it depends on you and the effect you want. To switch the other layers back on, we use the eyes, so I'll switch on the red and I'll switch on the black text. And now we have three layers. One of the things that I noticed, and I'm just going to switch off these two layers just so we're back to the original text here, is if I go to object and shadow layer, there is one which says inset shadow. And if you click on it and click on OK, nothing much seems to happen. Now, down here, I've called this one red. I switched that one on and off, so I know that's the red layer. This one is the gray layer. So I'm going to double click on that and rename it gray. So I know what we're looking at. So those are the first three, but if I switch all three off, can you see I've got another gray layer here? And if I select that, you can see it's actually the bottom layer. So let's just turn this, um, what will show up, say pink. And I'm going to switch off this stroke and pick uh, bright pink here. Now, if I switch all the layers on, can you see it's disappeared? And that's because whenever scale three creates a new layer, it adds it to the bottom. So in order to see it, what you need to do is actually click and drag it up to the top. And now if we go down, you can see that's the pink layer, that's the black layer, that's the red layer, and that's the gray layer. And working back up again in size, here's the gray, here's the red, here's the black, and here's the pink. I don't particularly like the way that Scale 3 does colors because once you put this pink on top um, with a variety of colors, it doesn't really give you a true reflection. Still, it's there and that's what it's useful for. So if you do an inset layer and you can't find it, the answer is it will be at the bottom here 
and just click and drag the layer and it'll move to the top. Now in terms of actually cutting it out, what we can do is simply separate these out. We've now got the four layers and if you were clever enough, let's just align them on the center just to make sure they all look neat and tidy. So if you had strips of paper, you could actually put the strips on your mat, across the mat in each layer, and you could cut as many layers as you can fit in. If we just click on the print preview button, again, you can see you've got four layers. So that's a quick way of using the shadow layer effect. I hope you find it useful and thank you for listening. As I said earlier, if you do have any requests, please feel free to email me at myrequest at bhtinternet.com and if I can help, I will. Have a great day.